Hi, I'm Haley Menard from The Sugar Burger, and today we are going to test the most highly rated copycat Krispy Kreme recipe I could find on Google. Copycat recipes are a great thing for when you don't feel like driving two minutes to the store and being frustrated for hours in your kitchen, but they sure are fun. So today, join me as I try to recreate the classic donut. Should I put balls on it or no? So to assemble the dough, we have to first hit the microwave a couple times. This recipe calls for melted butter, and it also calls for the milk to be heated. The reason for the milk to be heated is because we're putting our yeast in that to let it bloom. Yeast likes two things. It likes warm places and it likes sugar. So it's basically like me on vacation. So we'll throw the butter in the microwave first. We're gonna put it in for about a minute. We have one stick. And while that's happening, I'm gonna measure my milk and yeast. For this recipe, we have one and a quarter cups of whole milk. And we dribbled a little. This milk is going to go in the microwave for about 45 seconds. You just want to warm it up, but you don't want it to like boil or anything crazy like that. All right, we got we got 12 seconds to talk while we wait for uh, the microwave to be free, so. <gasps> <gasps> Look at this melted butter. Melted AF. Now the milk is going in for 45 seconds. So our milk is all heated up and we are going to put two and a quarter teaspoons of dry active yeast in the milk and give it a little mix. What's going to happen is it's going to hang out in this milk hot tub and it's going to get ready to make our dough rise. The yeast is going to hang out in here for about five minutes before you're going to mix it into the dough. A hot tip about storing your yeast, I like to get some of these tinted containers that are normally for coffee. When yeast isn't like ready for action, it prefers to stay in like a cool dry place and so it doesn't die because it is living so you have to be kind while our yeast is blooming we can get together the rest of the ingredients that we need in the mixing bowl everything wet is going in at first as well as your sugar and salt we have a quarter cup of sugar and a half a teaspoon of salt and we have two eggs since i am testing a recipe i won't get all bougie on you with my duck eggs i'm going to use um, some regular ass chicken eggs and make sure that we stay consistent with the recipe our yeast is ready if you check out the bowl you do you have some like bubbles in there showing you that it is indeed active. We are going to put this yeast and milk mixture into the same bowl as our sugar, salt, and eggs. We are going to also add the melted butter, which is a little bit cooler now that it's been hanging out. From here, we're gonna start mixing just until everything's combined. You will notice I have a dough hook. It is not the same as like a paddle or whisk attachment. This must be put the flour in is going to simulate kneading with your hands. So it's 2022, we don't really need to do that anymore. We are going to use our fancy motorized dough hook. Everything looks pretty well combined from our liquids standpoint. This means that we can add our dry ingredient which is just flour. It's actually bread flour that this recipe calls for. You know, the protein content in bread flour is a little bit higher. So just like my super awesome muscles are uh, formed by protein, so are your breads. It gives it a more firm structure. And this is four and a quarter cups. Once this first half has gotten incorporated, we're gonna scrape the size of the bowl and then add the second half. Sometimes in recipes like this, you might have to add a little extra flour if you think it's too wet. A good rule of thumb is with this dough hook, if the dough is sticking to itself and not the sides of the bowls, you're probably in good shape for the dough to not stick to you. I don't wanna overwork this donut dough because as you may be aware, if you're a Krispy Kreme fan, they're pretty tender. Once this is combined, I'm gonna switch bowls. I'm gonna put it in a bowl that is lightly sprayed with what I have in my cabinet, it's avocado oil. We just wanna make it so that this dough doesn't stick to the side of its rising bowl. Okay, dough in the bowl. Take a good mental picture of this because you're going to want to know when it has doubled in size and therefore it's okay to go ahead and roll out so that we can cut our donuts into their appropriate donut shape. Once it's in the bowl, it's gonna get like a nice little nap time kitchen towel put over it. So no like crust forms over the top and it can retain some of the warm atmosphere. And we're gonna wait for it to rise. That's gonna be about an hour. Our dough has been sitting for an hour and it got bigger. 
it is time to roll it out. Make sure you flour your surface because this dough is a little sticky. Just kind of want to press the air out of it a little to make it a little bit more reasonable. Look at that beautiful baby. We're going to try to get this about a half inch thick. You can already see the yeast has done its job because it's puffy and it wants to stay puffy. Even one more useful thing that a beer glass can do is make donuts. I'm just gonna use a regular degular pint glass to cut these. Did you hear that? It's the air coming out because she is yeasted. Once we have our beer glass circles, you might be thinking to yourself, well, this doesn't look like a glazed mm. donut. There's a hole in the middle. So we're going to use our secondary alcoholic beverage glass, a shot glass to make the donut holes in the middle. So you don't have to buy any extra stuff. Now we have the ring of our glazed donut. And then these little guys we're gonna save and make donut holes out of, or munchkins if you are from the Northeast and love Dunkin' Donuts. This is a very cute donut. You can already see that he is rising. We're going to take all of our shaped donuts, put them on a baking tray, and cover them with the kitchen towel again. All shaped, yeasted bake items have the Jesus complex. They need to rise again. So we're going to give these guys another 45 minutes to kind of come back to life before we fry them. Night, night. It's fry time. What I have done here is I've taken my Dutch oven and put uh, an entire bottle of canola oil in here. I have a probe in here telling me the temperature of my oil and that's going to be 375. Susan, we have to wait again because now I got too hot. I talked too long. Jesus Christ. Stupid probe. Our donuts have puffed up beautifully. We are going to get them in the fryer and they cook really fast. We're talking like 45 seconds aside. We're looking for golden brown. So just gently pop them in and they're puffing even more in the fryer. It's beautiful. You don't wanna overcrowd your fryer, especially if you have, you know, kind of a small space like me, because when you do that, you're gonna bring your oil temperature way too far down and the, the donuts aren't gonna cook right. Almost there. Oop. Now it's donut hole time. We're gonna take all of the holes and pop them in the oil. They've puffed up into closer to ball shape. The cute thing about these is that when they're ready to turn, they kind of turn themselves. They just kind of go poop, belly up in the oil. Susan, I didn't know I couldn't handle it all. This is stressful. So what really is a donut without the glaze? Especially if you're trying to make a Krispy Kreme copycat. Let's put together a really quick glaze. It is super easy. It is three ingredients, four cups of powdered sugar, half a cup of milk, and a pinch of salt. It's time to whisk all this together. Our glaze is all mixed together. You can see it's a looser consistency, which will be great for dipping. We're just going to very liberally dip the donuts and pop them on this rack on top of a cookie sheet. It's just gonna make the cleanup a little bit easier. Make sure that you get the whole donut. It's a lot of dipping. Here we go, ball time. I'm gonna zhuzh them. Does this work? It doesn't, it doesn't work. I don't recommend it. But now I know. Oh, well, this is a terrible idea, Susan. We have the moment of truth. We are going to see if this copycat recipe really copied Krispy Kreme donut good enough. This was our favorite donut. I'm going to, of course, give the best one to the judge. Are you ready, Nate? <laughs> Don't make it weird. Just try the donut. That's uh, good. Yeah? Yeah, that's a good donut. Does it taste like Krispy Kreme or is it just a good donut? Yeah, it's it's super soft. It works. Mm -hmm. It worked. Do you want to take a bite? Yeah, I kind of do. I'd eat the whole thing. It does taste like Krispy Kreme. I don't feel like my performance today was as good. Thanks for copycatting with me today. You know next time you feel like a Krispy Kreme donut, you could always come to the Menard Kitchen. And instead of two minutes, you can have them in under two hours or less. But it's still a lot of fun.